Hey everybody, Glenn here again with DigitalSandwich.net. Today let's talk about light fall off and shape with IES lights in Cinema 4D. So let's take a look at some examples of lights. So here is a picture of a spotlight shining on a wall. And you can see by this picture that there is a shape to the light. So the light is making this big oval shape on the wall. And then there's a darker area next to it. And then there is a lighter area causing this kind of secondary shape here. So what's probably happening is this is the main light. And then there's probably some reflection going on inside of the light that's causing this, this little outer rim of light. Let's look at some more. And you can see that pretty much every light has its own different shape and size. Like some are these kind of thinner lights. Some are these big wide lights. Some have these little weird lines going around. And lights are designed for many different purposes. So they all have their own shape and weird little inconsistencies. And that's all cool and interesting. But how this helps you is that lighting manufacturers will save this information into a .ies file, which you can then open up in your 3D program, and you can create a light with all of these cool little shapes. So let's hop into Cinema 4D and take a look. I'm going to create a new light. I'm going to make an IES light, and it brings up this dialog box. Please select IES file. Now what you're probably saying right now is, I don't even think I have any IES files, and even if I do, I don't know where they're at. Well, let me tell you, you do have IES files, but I am not exactly sure where they're at. They're probably somewhere in the Maxon folder, but there's an easier way to get to this. I'm going to cancel out of this. I'm just going to make a regular spotlight. I'm going to line it up with this spotlight I created here. Let me rotate 90 degrees. Let's uh, rotate up a little bit. Let's kind of line this up. It's not quite right. Okay. Uh, make it a little wider. Okay, so if I render right now, you know, here's my spotlight. So let's find some IES files. Cinema 4D started supporting IES files in R12, and it included about 800 or maybe 850 IES files in it. So what you can do is just go to the search, type in IES, and you can probably find it. But I downloaded another preset pack of IES lights from C4D Cafe. It's called this White Hawks, White Hawks, Witch Hawks IES light collection where he has 19,370 IES files, which sounds like a lot. But what I like about it is that it's saved into a library file and it's separated by manufacturers. So it's, it's easy to navigate. So you can just download that, put it in your content browser. And I'll leave a link to this so you can download it later. So I'm going to use this. So let's go into our content browser. I'm going to go to presets, find my white talk collection. And here we have a bunch of different lights. Let me make this a little bit bigger. A bunch of different lights from a bunch of different manufacturers. So I'm just going to click on one. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one. You should load up a bunch of different IES files. Let me change my view type so we can see a little better. So here is... So here are a bunch of different IES files. And it has a little thumbnail of what these actually look like and what the shape looks like. So you can see here's some thin ones. Here's some small ones. Here's some wider ones and they all have their own different kind of fall off and brightness so I can go down here find one that I like you know this one kind of looks like a spotlight so let's start with this one for now and so what I can do is in my light I can change it from a spotlight to an IES light and it isn't going to ask me for an IES file right away so what I can do is go into photometric and under photometric data I can just grab one of these files that I like from my content browser Drag it right underneath file name right here. And if I hit render right now, it looks like nothing happened. And the reason I can't see the light right now is one of two reasons. And the first reason is that I probably just grabbed a really small light. So maybe this is a you know little reading light or a flashlight. And so it's a really small light and the intensity is really low. Or my scene just might be way too big and it isn't in a real world scale. So the light is just super tiny and it, I can't even see it. So what I can do is I can either shrink down my scene or I can just crank up the intensity of this light. I hit render right now. I can see I got this little shape to my light right here. And what's great about this is it takes almost no time to look through and pick a light that you like. And just like a regular light, I can go in, I can add shadow settings, I can change visibility settings, I can change the color of the lights. I still have all the options of a regular light, but with the added benefit of having this light shape in there, built in for free. So if you have a spotlight or, or wall fixtures 
and you want a specific shape, you can probably find it in an IES file. And if you can't find what you're looking for or you need a very specific shape that isn't the shape of a real world shape, the other thing you could do is just make a material and put it on your light. So you can go in and let me switch this back to a regular spotlight and I can make a new material and under my transparency settings I can go in and make a for an example let's make a checkerboard you make it not completely white so if I drag this right over my light it's going to add the transparency to my light and you can see that based on where it is it's going to add the shadow in for me so I can change all these settings to make it a little more and we get all these weird little and I can get this checkerboard shape on my light so I could go in and actually draw how I want this light to be shaped and use that black and white image as a transparency map for my light to give it a, a different shape and I mean this could take a long time but you can get really detailed and specific of how you want it shaped and it's good if you want a really weird broad shape like a big star or something that you just can't find in an IES light. So hopefully for this tutorial you learn that you can download thousands upon thousands of free IES lights of real world lights. Now I find that a lot of times that this isn't really needed. But for very specific things like a spotlight or little uh, wall sconces can save you a lot of time because chances are the light is already built and saved in an IES file. All you have to do is find it and, and put it on there. Or if you need to design your own shape, you can make the material, make it yourself. So for DigitalSandwich.net, this is Glenn with IES Lights.